The guardrail to China-U.S. relations must have one very important prerequisite, and that is the respect for China's sovereignty and territorial integrity regarding the Taiwan issue in particular. The Taiwan issue stands at the very core of China's national interest. Stamping on China's bottom line and undermining China's interests are in no way helpful to building the guardrail. Secondly, the guardrail for China-U.S. relations must be built on mutual respect. Only on this basis can we build an effective guardrail. In the past, the two countries have set up multiple exchange mechanisms. These are very good dialogue mechanisms to avoid confrontation. The encounter rules at sea, for example, are negotiated after many rounds of consultations. China has made great efforts and showed its utmost sincerity on this issue. Even prior to the crisis, there were negotiations going on about the encounter rules at sea. These three mechanisms could have served as the platform for the guardrail, but sadly, they are ruined by the U.S. I was about to introduce my third point. The guardrail proposed by the U.S. is one that allows it to conduct close-up reconnaissance along our coast to seek navigation hegemony under the pretense of navigation freedom, to have the right to challenge China, yet disallowing China to fight back. The guardrail must be built on the basis of the one China principle and mutual respect. That is what a real guardrail should look like. It's not the U.S. version of the guardrail, which is equivalent to allowing the privileged few to set fire while banning the ordinary folks to use lamps.